Welcome to lecture 3 of device fabrication lab that is metallization. I will start the lecture with introduction. Then I will discuss the types of metallization. What are the metals used in metallization? And in detail, I will discuss the thermal evaporation technique which we do perform in the lab. Now starting with the introduction, in simple words, metallization is the process where we put or deposit metal over the device to get uh, conducting paths or to transmit electrical signals or even extract el electrical signals from the device. So in detail, metallization is the process by which components of ICs are interconnected by a conductor that is obviously metallic in nature. This process produces a um, thin film metal layer that will serve as the required conductor for interconnection of various components on the IC or chip. Another use of metallization is to produce metallized, metallized area uh, called as metallic contacts or bonding pads around the periphery of the chip to produce metallized area for the bonding wire leads uh, from the pack package to the chip. Okay, so in your left hand side you can see a diagram where there are uh, there is a silicon die and it is it has some electrical uh, connections like uh, that as the, denoted as bonding wires with the pads that are square shaped so these pads are selectively deposited over the this silicon die using this metallization conduct metallization process and in the um, right side you can see there is a wafer and over that interlayer dielectric is there and some grooves have been made and these grooves to be filled out with metal so after metallization the figure looks like b figure b so after planarization you can get this in figure c um, where the excess metal has been removed from the top of the surface and you are getting these uh, metal lines okay so uh, moving to the next slide Metallization can be broadly categorized into two types. One is physical vapor deposition, in short PVD. Another one is chemical vapor deposition, in short CVD. So in PVD, the atoms or molecules of desired material that we want to deposit it first is first um, converted into wafer phase. Then it gets sticks to the surface or get deposited over the surface. The most important point in PVD is it is a line of sight deposition technique. That is the substrate should be in front of the source. Here source is the metal that we want to deposit. So basically the material that is to be deposited is first heated, it melts, then it evaporates and stick to the surface. There are actually three types of PVD techniques. One is uh, thermal evaporation that we actually carry out in lab. And I will also discuss this in detail further. The second one is electron beam evaporation and third is sputtering. So the other method that uh, I discussed, I mentioned is uh, chemical vapor deposition. That is the use of chemical reaction from a derivative of desired material which is to be deposited. So say for example aluminium, you can use trimethyl aluminium, a compound of aluminium that is. Uh, and you can have some reaction at the surface where you want to deposit the aluminium. Surface means the, over the substrate that you, uh, over which the aluminium is to be deposited. So here we, in, uh, in CVD we use a chemical process. Now coming to the choice of metal, which metal to be used for metallization. Some metal films that are easily deposited by evaporation are listed here like aluminium, copper, chromium, gold, silver, titanium, palladium. But among these most commonly used material is aluminium. Also in industries they use aluminium for discrete diodes, transistor and almost uh, most of the ICs. And in lab also we show deposition of aluminium over the oxidized silicon wafer. We can get the thickness of around 1 micrometer. That is very good, good yield is there for aluminium. It offers several advantages like good conductivity, easy to deposit. Why? Because uh, melting point is com very low compared to other metals around 600 degrees Celsius. It has very good uh, adherence to silicon dioxide surface that, it sti that is it sticks well. Then um, it, is, it offers a ohmic contact that is non-rectifying and also very low resistance. Uh, then um, it can be uh, patterned and uh, with a single deposition and etching is also very smooth. That is um, 
we can use lithography technique over the aluminium and it is very much compatible to lithography it also has some limitations like uh, it cannot withstand high temperature like around more than 600 degrees celsius uh, it, there is a tendency to form al2o3 that will that is the aluminium will get oxidized and it will no longer will be a good conductor also it suffers from electromigration also due to this uh, high temperature some of the aluminium can fuse into fuse and penetrate into the oxide of silicon uh, or or diffuse into uh, side uh, means interfaces of other uh, materials that is in the device so we have to keep in mind the our application is not a high temperature operation if we have used aluminium for the metallization process now i will explain thermal evaporation technique in detail so the three main steps involved in this process is first the conversion of solid metal into gaseous phase transportation of this gaseous phase to the substrate and finally the condensation of the gaseous metal over the substrate this whole process is done in vacuum chambers actually all the pvd physical vapor deposition techniques that is thermal evaporation e beam uh, that is electron beam technique evaporation and sputtering all need vacuum so this we can attain this vacuum in two steps first the a mechanical pump that is a rotary pump is used to take the pressure to 10 to the minus 3 millibar then after that from there oil diffusion pump with the help of liquid nitrogen we can take the pressure to 10 to the minus 6 millibar which is which is advisable for passing high amount of current and that will be sufficient enough to melt the aluminum or any metal that we will be, we will be using so why we need vacuum so here are the points listed out like to reduce the particle density that is impurities dust particles to remove air gas molecules to reduce thermal transport of to substrate that is if when uh, when the aluminum is melting the, it is very hot and the heat can go up to the substrate so we do not need that also why to remove why we need to remove this particle density so as to minimize the scattering of this uh, wave vapor that is going up upwards so less current is required to achieve desired filament temperature and uh, and the most important one is to increase the mean free path that is the average distance between two successive collisions of the atoms or molecules that is going towards the substrate so in right you can see this uh, thermal thermal evaporation setup that we have in uh, our lab so this uh, cylindrical thing is the actually the system or chamber in uh, inside which the vacuum is done mm, and uh, at the right side there are some control controls to control the to actually measure the or to monitor the pressure inside the ch uh, chamber mm, and the some rheostats are there uh, to control the current through the filament and uh, some rotary pumps and diffusion pump is there that is not visible here okay so in next slide we will discuss in detail what is what is actually going on now i will explain the working mechanism of thermal evaporation unit so in the left hand side you can see the this bell kind of uh, thing which is a stainless steel cylindrical vessel closed at the top completely and sealed at the base by a gasket so you can see the substrate is attached to the substrate holder facing down and the uh, source is uh, located at the bottom just at the bottom and this is in line of sight as it is a pvd technique so the crucible containing target material is actually the filament that through which the uh, high current is passed so you can also see in the top right corner this is the crucible uh, green colored crucible so through which the current is passed and the um, principle that we are using is the raised stiff heating so when the current is passed this uh, filament get heat uh, get heated up because of the increase in resistance and which in, in turn uh, melts the aluminum and the aluminum will go up and stick to the surface so in lab we use the tungsten filament which has a uh, melting point of around 3000 degrees celsius and whereas the aluminum has 600 uh, degrees celsius so it is safe to use tungsten for 
to use as a filament for depositing aluminium so this is to be kept in mind that uh, which material we are which metal we are using as a filament so we cannot use the vice versa if you want to deposit tungsten then you cannot use aluminium because uh, before reaching the melting point of tungsten the aluminium itself will melt so this is to be keep in mind also in the uh, middle figure figure middle right figure so there you can see a shadow mask means having some holes so if as i uh, mentioned earlier that uh, in industries or in device uh, fabrication you have to have some patterns and uh, some metal lines over the device to get uh, to conduct the electrical signals so for that proper patterning and um, proper lithography and um, um, means layout of metal lines to be done so this is actually done using masking technique so only you can see only the uh, metal only the holes are aligned only the uh, holes through the holes the metal is getting uh, passed and uh, deposited over the substrate so in the, at the bottom figure you can see this uh, shadow mask that, that we actually use in our lab having some uh, holes square ho square holes so this will in turn uh, reflect a dot kind of structure over the oxidized silicon wafer so here are the points explaining the working mechanism of thermal evaporation unit for your future reference highlighting the all important points and uh, the values to be keep in mind so here is a schematic diagram of thermal evaporation unit explaining the process by which vacuum is attained or lower pressure is attained so here you can see two types of pumps that is uh, rotary pump and diffusion pump three types of valves roughing valve baffle valve backing valve and two types of gauges pirani gauge and penning gauge so at first starting with the atmospheric pressure rotary pump comes into play rotary pump takes out the air from vent out the air through the chamber through the roughing valve and take the pressure to 10 to the power minus 3 millibar value and this pressure is monitored by pirani gauge which has a maximum readability of 10 to the minus 3 millibar. After this, backing valve is opened and roughing valve is closed. So now the uh, air is vented out through uh, wave, this uh, diffusion pump in series with rotary pump. Okay. So the working principle of this diffusion pump is uh, the oil gets heat up at the bottom that has a, and when it is sufficiently heated, it uh, has a tendency to go up. So it, it goes up till the bottom of the chamber traps the air molecules whatever there is left behind and condenses down and falls again to the reservoir okay so this liquid nitrogen actually helps to uh, for the condensation of this oil molecules otherwise it may happen that the oil get, can get into the chamber okay so the liquid nitrogen helps in that way also the another thing is that the as the pressure is directly proportional to temperature so so lower the pressure actually lower the temperature it is more easier to attain lower pressure value so this also although baffle valve is there to restrict the uh, any oil or any contaminant to enter into the chamber but still a liquid nitrogen helps to, for uh, the oil to I mean, uh, actually prevents the oils to get into the chamber so by this way um, we can attain the uh, pressure of around 10 to the minus 6 millibar and this pressure is monitored using penning gauge that is uh, from 10 to the minus 3 millibar to 10 to the minus 6 millibar so once the pressure uh, sufficient this uh, pressure is reached so we are good to go with the passing of current and that will be uh, the final step of uh, this thermal evaporation uh, um, technique Okay. 